guys, Rex are here. I got my comfy quarantine pants on because today we're just chilling, staying home, relaxing with the BRZ. And I'm in a great mood today as we got word that they are now making, well, okay, it's not 1000% confirmed, but you know, analysts, they just keep saying it over and over again. And Car Throttle came out with the article even saying it a couple days ago. But the brand new 86 and BRZ is now gonna be called the Toyota GR86 and BRZ. And they're gonna be coming with one thing, my car. I wish I had, I had my BRZ for years now. But one thing my car needs is a turbo, which I really want a turbo on my car. I actually have a WRX turbo, which I've been contemplating on putting on my BRZ. But it's gonna do all, it's gonna have a have to have a lot of custom fabrication and all that, like exhaust, I should say, custom exhaust to be able to put it together correctly. Or I just go out and buy a turbo kit. But now people can just buy a turboed BRZ from the factory, and they are stating. It's gonna make around 260 brake horsepower. And that would be awesome if that is true. So again, none of this, none of this is confirmed, but they have a lot of details with it. And Germany came out with the BRZ final edition for 2020, as if the style and powertrain and all that is not gonna be the same. Because why would they call it final edition? Unless it really meant that like either the BRZ is being completely cut off, there's gonna be no more BRZ, or it's coming back with a new design and most likely turboed. Cause think about it, when 2016 to 2017 BRZs and uh, FRSs to 86, when that transition came, there was no final additions, but now there is one. So it's pretty tempting to bite on that bait that it's gonna be coming turbocharged for 2021. I'm pretty sure everybody agrees that these cars should have came turboed from factory back when they came out in like 2013. So apparently all this new information is coming from gr86.org and it's saying that's got the 2.4 liter turbocharged engine that the same one that's in the Ascent, which I think is just awesome because of how lightweight these cars are. And I already know, just throw uh, exhaust on it, and a tune, you'd be way faster. Maybe exhaust and injectors, fuel pump tune, again, way faster. So that's gonna be awesome. And the whole reason why they would even be giving the 86 and BRZ a bump in power is because, well, the WRX and SCI, well, I think mainly the SCI is getting a big bump in power, going up to 400 horsepower. That's what's being rumored right now for 2021. So Subaru 2021 is gonna be a huge year for them. So they're stating that it's gonna have better interior. The exterior is obviously gonna look a little bit different as well. I don't know how much they're gonna change it. It could be a whole new front bumper and headlights and all that, which that's like what, differentiates all the BRZs and FRSs and 86s is the front bumper mainly. But they could go a completely different route and make it completely different. We don't know that yet. I guess we're gonna find out hopefully fall this year. I'll be making another video on it if it does. But I wanna talk about pricing because the WRX, which makes 200 and like 56 or 260 horsepower right now, you can buy one brand new for I think as low as 26 grand. That's like the same price as a naturally aspirated BRZ brand new. It's pretty insane. And I know like all the special editions of BRZs and like the high performance packages, they can add up to like over 30 grand, which is insane for a non turbo BRZ in my opinion. And then SCI, they range like up to like 40, over 40 grand brand new. So it leads me to the question, where's the turbo BRZ gonna be falling into place here? I believe that the WRX and SCI are gonna bump up in price even more especially if they're like 400 horsepower, or maybe the WRX is like 330 and SCI is like 400 or something crazy like that. All speculations, obviously. Even at 260 would be a decent amount lower. So I don't know how that's gonna work out. In my opinion, if the power range is like 260, like the WRX is right now, then the price should not be higher than no more than 28 grand, I'm saying. I think the base model no options version, which should still be nice, which I think the interior of my BRZ, which is the premium version, and then they have a limited, which is even better. I think the premium version should still be a pretty good bargain for your money. With it being turboed at 28 grand, that's what I believe it should be at and what I believe it will be at. Is that true though? I don't know, it could be 35 grand. I have no idea, but if it's 35 grand, I don't think that many people are gonna be buying it. 
especially with the Supra. Apparently it's coming out with the four cylinder turbocharged version of that, but it's gonna be automatic only. So why would people buy that when you can buy a turbo GR86? And you know the Supra has to be priced more than the GR86. So an uh, inline six Supra right now is around 50 grand, 60 grand. So I'm guessing a, a four cylinder one has to be like 40 grand or like 38, maybe 35 grand, which goes back to what I was saying before, as I think the GR86 turbocharged should be 28 grand base price. And I feel like that'd be pretty good. And with the options up to 33 grand. And then Supra would be, you know, 35 grand for the four cylinder turbo one. And that's automatic only. Why would you buy that, dude? Just not probably just because it's a Supra. That's probably why. But I would not buy that. If, if those two options are in my face, I'd be like, I'm gonna GR86 with that manual. If it's not manual though, a lot of people are not gonna be buying it. I don't think they're gonna do that though. I believe they're gonna stick with that manual transmission. As I'm talking about this, if you guys have any comments or questions, so let me know down below. I'm just giving my thoughts and speculations on the whole GR86 and BRZ concept with how I own my own BRZ, which I'm in love with and I'm gonna continue to keep modding it. I'm personally not interested in buying a new one. I wanna keep this one and build it up, you know? Which I'm so sad that drift events are basically canceled this year still. There's supposed to be a drift event coming up this weekend and she gone. Okay, so let's move on to arguments now that people are posting about this in the comments section. A lot of them saying how with the turbo version ascent motor, the RPM range is, isn't gonna be that much. Well, that motor in the Ascent was made for an SUV, so obviously it's tuned differently. I believe that they're gonna up the RPM to at least six and a half, seven grand. It's not gonna be five and a half grand. That is, that I do believe that is pretty on the low end, as WRXs make six and a half grand all day, so I do believe the RPM range is gonna be bumped up. So I don't know why people are even arguing that, and even if it's not, like you can always tune it, which gets on to my next one, People complaining that, for instance, my car makes around 240 and 250 horsepower in A because I have a full exhaust for my headers all the way to the back with a full tune and all that. And I'm on E85, so I did a lot of mods to be able to make my car around 240 to 250 horsepower for it being non turboed which is, I love the power in this car, I love the power band. And on E85, it makes such a big difference compared to this 93 octane. Which gets on to my next one, is that the Ascent motor, yes, it's a turbocharged four-cylinder, but guess what? They're putting 0W20 in the, in the oil, and it's running on 87 octane. It's not running on 91 or 93, 87. And with it going into a sports car, my car from the factory requires premium gasoline, which I'm assuming that the Ascent motor being put into a sports car is gonna take 5W30, not 020, just like the WRX and SCI do, and it's gonna take premium gasoline and not unleaded 87 octane. So after that all comes in and they are still mad, you throw an exhaust on it and tune it, especially if you tune it on 85, get like a flex fuel kit and all that, which they aren't that much money in my opinion for the power gains that you do get is worth it for the, the money to, power ratio, I guess, or I don't know, something like that. So it's definitely worth it. You'd be over 300 horsepower easy. Just with an exhaust, it'd be over 300 horsepower if you buy the new BRZ with the turbo version, obviously, which I don't know if they're gonna make a NA version and a turbo version or just a turbo version, or who knows, it could be just NA. If it is, then wow. Um, I'm just in shock that they still are not changing it after all these years, since 2013, they are not bumping the power, which I shouldn't be too surprised. Look at the WRX, the WRX hasn't really done anything. Well, besides that, like I said, they got the new FA 2.0 motor, but for the most part, WRX and SCIs have always had the same EJ motors in them. But I've been rambling on for a while now, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys didn't get sketched out about me getting too close to my car. You guys all better stay safe and stay inside, stay home, stay healthy, and get through this quarantine. Like, we're all in this together, and hopefully 
we all make it out together. But that's gonna do it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys have any questions or any comments about the whole GR86 and the Subaru BRZ, the 2021 is when we'll be seeing it. That is it. Hope you guys all have a great day and peace. Okay, I'm done with that.